And the topic, I want you to listen carefully to the topic that you want to do. It is not something new, but it's something you're going to be meeting in GSS1 also, which is uh, fractions. Fraction, of course, in junior school, it also occurs in senior school. So I'll be sharing the screen right away as we look into what fraction is all about. Um, you can i will be asking you some questions now you know depend just to show your previous knowledge on fraction so fractions yeah i i just i muted you you've been muted so try to unmute yourself and tell me what do you think fraction means what does it mean yes you can unmute yourself now and talk what do you think fraction means Yes, I'm hearing background noise there. So what do you think fraction means? Do you have any idea? Or oh, have you seen fraction before? Yes, sir. Okay, so probably you must have solved one or two questions on fractions before. So fraction. Okay, let me mute you now so that you can listen carefully to the explanation. Fraction simply means Fraction simply means proportion. Simply means portion, or you say proportion. Now, if I'm talking about portion, I'm talking about uh, a particular. Uh, okay, the network cut it, uh, you know, in between. But I'm going to continue now to share the board with you so that I can write the topic again. So talking about fraction, fraction means portion, yeah, means portion, portion. Let's take, for example, uh, you know, example, example, let's take this first one. If you have, if you have, of uh, let's say 24 24 suites you have 24 suites yeah you can give away you can give away a uh, certain number of suites you can give away a certain number of suites out of your 24 suites so the portion of the suite that you can give away is known as the fraction that you have given away. Let's take for instance, and you give, you know, and you give, uh, say, you give out of the 24, you give five away. If you have 24 suites, and give five away, then I can say, the fraction, fraction given away is just the portion you have given away out of the total portion, which is uh, 5 over 24, you know, 5 over 24. The portion you have given away is 5 out of 24. I said, giving away 5 over 24. So 5 over 24 is a fraction. You know, just looking at the example of fractions. Then out of the 24, if you can give away 7, yes, 7 is also a fraction. 7 over 24 is a fraction. If you can give away 13, it's also a fraction. 13 over 24, you know, these are examples of fractions. 
for example, of fractions. So any portion of a certain quantity that you can give away, you know, are examples of fractions. Let's say out of the 24, if you give 24 away out of 24, this is not a fraction. It's not. Because you have, it's not a portion of it. You are giving the whole away. So that's why we cannot call 24 over 24 a fraction. You can call 3 over 3 a fraction. You can call 5 over 5 a fraction. You can call 24 over 1 a fraction. Because these are whole numbers. 24 over 24 is 1. So when you give a uh, portion of certain uh, substance away, or when you remove some portion, or you add some portion to themselves, you say you are dealing with fractions. So after knowing and identifying what a fraction is, then we're going to look into types of fractions. Types of fractions. Let me change this one. So these are examples of fractions as you give. So then the next thing to look at is types of fractions. Types of fractions. So now, types of fractions. On the types of fraction, we have the first type to look at, which is proper fraction. Proper fraction. Yes, I just used an example. I said, you know, you can give away uh, some portion of your 24 sweets. So out of 24, it is proper that I give one away. If I give one away, it's a proper fraction. Proper fraction simply means possible fraction. Possible fraction. Simply means possible fraction. So it's possible to give one away. It's possible to give five away. It's possible to give 19 away. It's possible to give 23 away. So these are called uh, proper fraction because they are possible fractions. They are, you know, the fractions that is possible to give away out of the total that you have. So that means in a fraction, as we have A over B, a number over the other, the number above that is called numerator, numerator, and the one below that is called the denominator, you know, when you have your numerator A less than the denominator B, we call it possible fraction or we call it a uh, proper fraction, proper fraction. So these are examples of proper fraction. There are lots of you know examples that we can raise, but I'm just using this from the previous knowledge that I said you want to share 24 sweets, or I mean 24 sweets, or you have 24 sweets. So the portion that is possible that you can give away, they are called proper fraction. But if you have 24, you can't give away 25 sweets. It's not possible. So that is impossible fraction or improper fraction. So let's go to the second type said improper fraction. Improper. Proper. So for improper fraction, you have, if you have your 24 sweets, so it is improper to say you want to give 25 away. So example, 25 out of the 24. No, that is improper. So excuse me, give me one pen. Hello, if you are touching that phone, it's on silence for you all. It's okay? Yeah, very good. Now, so 25 over 24 is an example, like I said. Then out of your 24, you can give away 28. Now it is improper. You know, any number that the, the, the numerator is now bigger than the denominator is an improper fraction. Then let me write this four properly. You can give away 30, 30 over 24. You can give away uh, any number that's bigger than 24. You cannot be given away out of your 24 suite. So let's say 50 over 24 is another example of a improper fraction. But I can go ahead and extend uh, my examples uh, beyond the 24 that I have given you 
and I can begin to say, okay, other examples of a proper fraction above now. You can say uh, 1 over 5, 3 over 7, uh, 4 over 10, uh, any number that the one above is smaller than the one below is proper. So have this and so on. Then I can go ahead and I mean increase these examples by having something like 5 over 3 or uh, even 5 over 2, uh, 7 over 5, wherever you have the bigger number above uh, the smaller one, it is not uh, proper. So this is going to lead us to the third example that uh, the third type of fraction that we're going to look at and that third type says uh, the three that is mixed fraction. Mixed uh, fraction. Mixed fraction. So for your mixed fraction, it's uh, from our input our impossible fraction that we get a mixed fraction. So if you have mixed fraction, you have an input fraction like uh, an example, let's say uh, samples now. So let's say you have something like uh, 5 over 2, for example. The 5 over 2 is improper. So it's going to lead us to how many 2 can I see in 5? That is 2. I mean, the 1 over 2. So this is an example of a mixed uh, fraction, or you call it mixed number. Then the next example I want to give. So we can have a lot of examples, but maybe 1 over 2 over 3, or uh, 5 over 7 over 8, or uh, 3 over uh, 1 over 5. Anything that includes whole numbers, uh, or, you know, mixed numbers. So after looking at the types of fraction, we are looking at what fraction means, and we have looked at the uh, type of fraction. We're going to look at how to add and subtract fractions. How to add and subtract fractions. Now, there are different ways. You know, there are different things to consider when you're adding a fraction. For example, let's say addition and subtraction, subtraction of fractions, addition and subtraction of fractions. So let's look at a few examples. Let's assume you have something like uh, this one, which is uh, 2, 5, it's 1 over 5. And you have another example here, like uh, 2 over 5 uh, plus uh, 2 over 7. Then you have another example here, like uh, we use the same 2 over 5 plus 7 over 15. So I'm having three questions at the go. Please follow it. I have 5, 5 here. Whenever you have the numbers, the denominator, they are the same. You have nothing to worry about. Just go ahead and add the numbers above and place it over the denominator. So this denominator is 5, then 2 plus 1, 2 plus and that's going to be 3 over 5. This is correct. But when you get to this second uh, this second example, you know, the second example, 2 over 5, 2 over 7, the denominators are different. So you're going to look for a least number, the smallest number that the two of these, these numbers can divide. The smallest number that this, the two of these numbers can divide. I mean, the, that both numbers can divide. And the smallest that the two of them will divide is 35. So 35. That is, you're finding the LCM. Finding the LCM. So these are going to divide 35. You're going to say 5. How many in 35? That is 7. Then that 7 multiplied by the 2 above. That is 14. So you have 14 plus how many 7 is in 35? You have 5. And 5 times 2 above is 10. So you have plus 10. Then you can say, this gives me 14 plus 10 is 24 out of 35. 24 is 35. So this is done. Then looking at the, uh, the third question, since you see that a, a number is a multiple of the other number, 15 is a multiple of 5. 5 can divide 15. Then the biggest of the two numbers become your LCM. So 15. So 5 in 15 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. And five, 15 in 15 is 1, 1 times 7 is 7. Then if you are adding 6 and 7, you 13, 13 over 15. And that is the you know, 
answer there. You can unmute yourself now, ensure there is no noise around you, or mute yourself and let me know if you get the whole explanation. Yes, do you get the explanation? Yes, sir. Okay, do you have any question on this aspect? No, sir. Okay, so that means I'm going to move on. So the next thing, please mute yourself back. The next thing we have to look at is what problem leading to fractions? What problem leading to fraction? And uh, okay, let me clear the screen now. What problems, you know, the interaction? What problems, the interactions? You see. So, what problems leading to fractions? Here yeah. is an example. Say it's one. Question one. If a student, if a student uh, spend If a student spend three quarter, no, three quarter, I see. You, uh, I, I mute. I mean, you are muted because of the background sound. So, don't worry. If you need to talk, you'll be asked to unmute yourself. So, if a student spend three quarter. Uh, of his money on snacks. On snacks. What fraction remains? Now, looking at this question, he said if the students spend a uh, three quarter of his money on snacks, what fraction remain? In an attempt to solve this, you're going to look at it and say, okay, you don't know how much it has, and you are not even asked how much it has. So, what you has is what fraction uh, remains? Okay, the fraction you have spent minus, you know, from, you, you take away, the step is to take away what you have spent from what it has. So, take uh, away, take away what he has spent from what he has. has. So, if he has a whole, a whole, whole, whole means one. So, he has one initially, then he has spent uh, three quarters. That means three out of four. So that means if you divide this money into four, you spend three remain one portion. So definitely the answer should be one portion out of four that is going to remain because we agreed initially that fraction means portion. So you spend three portion out of four, then it remains one portion out of four. Okay. Um, how do I get one over four? Let's look at it. This is one over one. It's one of one minus three uh, over four. And the healthcm, you know, one is a factor of four, so you pick four, the biggest number. So one in four is four, four times one is four. Then minus four in four is one, one times three is three. So four minus three simply gives one over four. And that is where I obtain this one over four from. Okay, let's look at. Uh, Another example, if that is clear, let's look at another example. Sample two. Sample two. Two thirds of a class. Two thirds of a class, or two thirds, and how you call it. So, two thirds of a class. 
Power Girls. How many boys are there if there are hundred students in class? In the class. So look at this. This is another one. How many girls, I mean, to third of a class of girls, how many boys are there if there are 100 students in the class? So to attempt to solve this, you want to say the total number of students, you know, to get the number of boys, or the total of a class, total must be the number of boys plus girls. Plus girls. Boys plus girls, that's the total. And the total has been given to be 100. You don't know the number of boys. That's what you're looking for. So name it anything, maybe X. Plus, you've been given the number of girls to be two third of the class. So two over three of the class, because the total of the class is 100. So two over three are girls. Then you're looking for uh, the number of boys. So here now, you're going to find the value of this. So this is 100 being equal to x plus 2 times, uh, uh, okay, let me change something. Let me make it 120 so that we can have a round. Okay. Change the question to the 120. That we don't have a fraction that we, that we've got to be dividing, dividing, and it's going to remain in, you know, anything. So, here, I'm going to change this to um, I'm going to change this to 120 so I'm going to write 120 there so start of 120 then the first 100 to becomes 120 because I've changed the value to 120 so that's going to be 120 so here now second step two I'm going to have 20. so 120 now equals x plus 2 total of 120 so how do I get to total of 120 I have 2 times 120 over 3 so 2 times 120 is uh, 2 uh, 40 240 all over 3 then uh, 120 now equal to x plus uh, 3 here 1 3 in 24 is 8 so x plus 80 so what am I going to have to eat to give 120 that is 40 so how do I get that x equal to 120 minus 80 that means x equals to 4 yeah that means there are 40 boys so 40 boys are in the class and if the total is 120 that means there are 80 girls in the class so 40 boys 80 girls there is another way that you could have used to solve this it's another way you could have used to solve this if you are you are asked to find such once you've been given the uh fraction of the girls to the third that means two out of three are girls so what remains out of three is one. That means one out of three are boys. So one out of three times the 120. Three here one, three here four, and that is 40 boys. You know, that is very fast. But you can't use this if your teacher demands theory. I mean, you should show your working, but you can use it if it's in objectives in order to be very fast. Or mute yourself now and tell me if you understand the question. Or if you have any question you ask. I understand. Okay, you understand it very well. So I'm going to be giving you uh, just one question to, you know, you're going to tell me what to do live and direct here. So I'm going to clear the screen now. Now, one question here. So 
if uh, if one fifth fifth of a class are boys. If one fifth of the class are boys, and there are and there are five hundred girls. I mean, not a class now of a school. So, one fifth of the school are boys, and there are five hundred girls. How many boys are there? So this is the question. One fifth of a school are boys, and the number of girls are five hundred. How many boys are there? So now, just talk. What do you think should be the solution? Yes, what am I to write down? 200. You said 500? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. 500 plus X. Plus what? X. X, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, what next? Okay. Are you stuck? Yes. Okay. So, let's look at it together now. See. One-fifth. Yes. Look up, please. One-fifth. You can mute yourself now so that uh, the noise at the background. Please. So, one-fifth of a school are boys. That is the first statement there. That means... 1 over 5 of the total number. But we don't know the total number. So 1 over 5 of the total. Call the total any letter, maybe P. 1 over 5 of the total population, P. Are uh, boys, according to the question. So that means if 1 over 5 are boys, are boys. If one over five are boys, what portion are girls? One out of five are boys. That means four that remains out of the five are girls. So four out of five are girls. Yes. That means yes, that means four out of five of the total population B equal to 500 equal to 500 so here now i need to find the total population by just simply saying 4 times p is 4p over 5 equal to 500 so i can cross multiply by saying 1 times 4p is 4p then that will give me 5 times 500 you know, this times this and this times this. so five times 500 now I can now say I want to divide uh, you know to find my P I'll divide both sides by four so I'll say P equal to 500 divided by four I mean 500 times five rather five times 500 divided by four so uh, two here is two and 2 here is 250. Uh, While 2 here is uh, 1, and 2 here is 125. So P equal to 125 times 5. 125 times 5. And I can say, the total population will be what is 125 times 5? 
One, two, five. Ah, times five. What is five times five? Five. Thirty-five. So remember, two five times two is what? Ten plus Ten. two. That is twelve. That is twelve. So that remains one. Five times ten. That is six hundred and twenty-five. So if the total population is six twenty-five, uh, let me get that straight and see something there again. One fifth. Yes. Okay. Now, so if the total population is this, the question is how many boys are there? So what is the percentage, I mean the fraction of boys, one over five? So you are just going to say the number uh, one over five of P. So one over five times five. So you can now call this year one, this year one to five. That means there are one to five boys. So that means the number of boys are 125 and the number of girls though you were not asked you've been given that number of girls are 500 which gives us the total population of 625 is that clear to you now yes sir okay so that is where we're going to be ending class for today uh today or tomorrow just uh, expect with you to the class. So thank you very much for today and do have a nice day ahead of you. Goodbye. Please I you give me work. Yeah, that would be later. That would be later. Not today. I'll be on Wednesday. Okay. Okay, sir. Alright.